All right, what you see here is a kitten specimen that has been prepared via what we call clearing and staining. It's said to be diaphanous. And what we see is that the bone has been stained red. We tried to stain the cartilage blue, but it did not pick up the, that stain. And then we made the flesh invisible using a pancreatic enzyme called trypsin. And so we can actually see the bones in situ. So what we can see here on the wrist here uh, we have our arm bones, lower arm bones here, the radius and ulna. And then we see a space there. Normally that would have been cartilage in a specimen of this age. But since the cartilage didn't pick it up, we just see it as clear. And then we see the ends of the bones. So the epiphyses, which are the ends, aren't fused yet to the diaphysis or shaft. They're separated by this cartilaginous area, which is called the epiphyseal plate. And we're looking at the top of my forceps there. Uh, epiphyseal plate, which is also the metaphysis of the bone. So these are cartilage replacement bones. So the uh, cartilage forms an initial model and then is replaced by bone. And we see that also in the hand bones. Uh, we see it in the vertebrae over here. So the vertebrae, um, we see that there's spaces in between the vertebrae. And again, that would have been cartilage and the ca vertebrae uh, ossify from the center outwards. And when that cartilage is used up, then it won't grow any further. So that is endochondral bone. Where we see most of the intramembranous bone is in the skull. So if we look at the skull, we see that the bones are fully ossified and that there are no breaks between the sutures. Let's see if we can get him over a little bit here. Yeah, come on kitty, behave. Anyway, uh, back end of the skull there. So if we look at the top skull bones, they're actually already contacting one another, but if we look further back here, there is a space here because the backbone, the occipital bones, those are endochondral, whereas these are intramembranous. So the endochondral bones haven't fully uh, changed their cartilage to bone, but the intramembranous bones uh, form fully as a bone. So we see this major difference within that cat itself. If we look over here, the nicer uh, better cleared specimen. This is a discus fish. It used to be one of my pets. It died. It had a mutant mouth, so I wanted to see what the mouth looked like. And so we can really see the cartilage here, especially uh, the scleral ossicles. Those are these little bones in the eyeball here are blue. And then we also see some blue out in the fins. Now, if you in lecture, I'll talk to you about how lepidotrichia, the fin rays, can be uh, have ossifications or cartilaginizations in them. These are not bone, they are not cartilage, they are fibrous uh, fin rays that have bone cells in there that are secreting some bone, but they're not really bone themselves. Anyway, um, it'll be a little harder to see here on the video, so you have to come and take a look at it. But um, again, most of the skull here is already red. So this is a fish that'll get about, you know, six inches in diameter. So, so this is just a baby. But we do see some blue in here. So that blue would indicate that those bones are anachondral. We can also look at the jaw here. And again, if you come in the lab and take a look at it, you'll be able to see that the back end of the jaw has some blue there. That is the articular bone. And the articular bone is an anachondral bone. And it is not fully developed. But most of the rest of the jaw bones, especially the dentary, which is the one with the teeth on it, and the premaxilla, which is the other uh, upper jaw bone with the teeth on it, those are fully red because they are already converted, or I mean, sorry, they're, they're intramembranous bones, so they never have any cartilage associated with them. All right, and what you'll also notice is that different from the cat, the vertebrae here are all red, and that's because their vertebrae form in a different way than our vertebrae. So when they form, their uh, notochord does ossify partially endochondrally, but most of what is on the outside here is bone that has form, formed intramembranously. So we see the complete vertebra already because that little bit of cartilage is already converted to bone. And we see that the vertebrae themselves, uh, most of the rest of the vertebrae are intramembranous because there are no um, there is no cartilage between the successive vertebrae.